Oh, my. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I, I didn't mean to intrude. No, 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 please don't get up. No! Filming on The Rise of Skywalker, talking to J.J. Abrams one day, he, we were chatting and he said, you should write a book. Are you? He's a smart guy. And I said, yeah, I am. Would you write the foreword? It'd be an honor, he said. And one of his observations is, on my behalf, that he thinks a lot of people don't realize that I am working a C-3PO inside a sensory deprivation tank, where all your human qualities, they're not there, they're not available to you. Um, I actually would put it a slightly different way. All right, I cannot feel my body. I, uh, I cannot see other than straight in front of me. Um, I cannot see below me without looking. But all the time, if you do that, you're affecting the performance, the uprightness of the character. So you can't keep so often I was pretending to see something that you, you assumed I, I could. But in general, I had that degree of motion, but I could increase it by setting my shoulders that way, so then I can look over there. So, but it meant I had to rehearse where over there was. And there is one point I talk in the book where I'm talking to Luke Skywalker, and I'm in the oil bath, and I'm talking away, and I must have blinked, because I suddenly realize uh, he's not there anymore, and kind of like, Oh, thank you. <laughs> because he, I hadn't noticed him walk out of my field of vision. You can almost see it in the, and there's something else in that scene I talk about. Remember the towel. Something's not right because now I can't see. Wait, oh my, what have you done? I'm backward, you sleep in purple. Suddenly an overgrown moppet like you would be stupid enough. When I'm talking, I'm actually making, deafening myself, because it's echoing inside this thing. Every element of the plastic and, and whatever the structure is made of, uh, stereophonically and stethoscopically comes up into my ears. So I'm living in this Babel tower of, of sound and trying to hear the other actors. And occasionally, if I have an earpiece um, that is going to really help me hear them, occasionally that will turn into blinding white noise. And nobody can get there fast enough with me shrieking, you know, like, get me out, stop it, stop it, it's doing it again. But I would also add the element of a terrible, terrible medieval torture called the Iron Maiden, which they would put people in, in a metal f f box, and, c and it was shaped like a, a humanoid, and they would close it and the trick was, on the closing doors, there were big spikes that would come jab into you. And I think that was the original design <laughs> for this costume. They took that medieval style and repurposed it. In the book, I talk about the places where it pinched and scratched and nipped and soared. And, oh, um, you didn't want to see my body um, at the end of the day. It, it was uh, multicolored bruises and, um, yeah, we won't go there. In all, the, in all the wrong places, too. What did he say? I'm rather embarrassed, General Solo, but it appears you are to be the main course at a banquet in my honor. <laughs> Being able to tell uh, Han Solo, impossible man, uh, that um, the Ewoks think I am some sort of god. <laughs> with with a g g great humility. <laughs> um, he has his moments, and of course in The Rise of Skywalker, he has moments of, 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 I think, great pathos, and uh, that he acknowledges, or the, the script through him, acknowledges a love and affection for both his, his friends, Poe, uh, Oscar, Daisy, John, Finn, Ray, but also, I believe, uh, also in another scene, um, for R2-D2, uh, but also in that scene, Taking one last look, sir, at my friends. I think the writers very cleverly acknowledge that his friends, the friends of Star Wars, are around this planet, if not around the galaxy. What are you doing there, 3PO? Taking one last look, sir, at my friends. <laughs>